Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society, he has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now! Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information? All right, folks, hey, how we doing? It's Tiki Central Canada, and as you can tell, we are live at the Name with Love competition a loud here place. in Ottawa. It is loud, it is packed. And uh, so I got my co-host with me, Paula. How are we doing today? Hi, people. And I waved again, oh my God. You, it's radio, Paula. I know. How I many drinks have you had? I want to know. All of them. I You've tried them all. all. There's 18 bartenders here, by the way, folks. Just let I you don't know. drink. <laughs> I know what she doesn't drink. I'm turning you into an alcoholic. I know, I'm scared I, of that. I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna apologize in advance to your, your fiance. I'm not trying to get you to be an alcoholic. I, I don't want to be one. No, exactly. Because you, as you're feeling already, it's not fun anyway, right? What, what? It's not fun anyway, right? Being an alcoholic. I hate it. No, 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 and I'm hating it. It's that weird phase of, right? Like, yeah. I went to eat the lamb there again, and then the kid, the, he kid looks at me, he's like, so, you, you like, you're liking the buzz? Oh, and I'm like, I'm hating no. it. And you can tell, too. That's the sad thing. You actually can tell you're buzzed. Oh, my God. And That's I told not him, good. I hate it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's like, what? Just to let you know, folks, she's been drinking water since then, so she's doing good. Okay. Oh, no. I, I, I did a whole new round now. Oh, I also didn't see that. <laughs> anyway, so this is Tiki Central Canada. So my name is Craig, and yes, we are uh, basically live at Made With Love. This is a special episode. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about drinks today. Go figure. And uh, we actually have our own booth here. It's it was pretty so cool. pretty. Tiki Pie. We're going to put in a picture. Yes. Well, I want to thank the Agalquit kids that came in to help out. They came in and helped decorate. I literally was in between truckloads. I came back and half the booth was already set up already. Oh, they're they did an amazing job. And uh, yeah, we actually sent them home. We're like, okay, you know, you guys get school in the morning. We know that. So uh, Aww. yeah. Exactly. You're so yeah. sweet. Look at well, you. I want to make sure that you know I get home in one piece. I, you know, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to get a phone call from Antonio's professor going, Craig, half my students are missing. And they're drunk. And they're drunk. Till today. And they got their glasses on. They got their coffee in their hands. This is not good. No, and they got a great experience here too because oh, they yeah. got to see all these bartenders. Well, yeah, so this is mixing all bartenders. Basically, what it is is that these are like mixologists, hardcore. They're kind of like the chefs of drinks. So they're not, and actually, there's like four tiki bars here. Yeah? Right? Yeah, yeah, four tiki bars here. Yeah. I'm very drunk then because I only oh, noticed one. Oh, you only noticed one. Okay. <laughs> good crap. Oh, my God. That's okay. not good. All right. Don't on, tell on, on that note. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I, I actually, yes. I'm very curious now because after all these drinks that have I been there, uh, no, we're not trying another drink with you. No, I no, know. no, yeah. After but all there these is a drink we'll talk about though. There is a drink, yes. That's what I'm gonna say. After all these drinks I've had, I want to know what drink you're gonna talk about today. Ah, there we go. Okay, so because you know me, I always talk about every exactly. every episode. There's a new drink. So this episode, we're gonna do Platter's Punch, and the reason why I picked this one because it fits the name with Love Competition, because these guys are basically making uh, drinks and then they're altering it. And you know what I mean? Like, so Planters Punch is one of those drinks through time, even a century old, has changed over time. And Wait, so, seriously? One century? A hundred years? It's, it's over a century old. Whoa. That's right. This has been around this, in it was the a, market. this wasn't made by Mom and Pa. No, this has been around <laughs> for a while. So yeah, anyway, so yeah, this drink basically is like these mixologists that we see here today. They're actually doing is transforming, taking a spirit and making it into a new drink. Can you believe I drank one of these drinks that actually tasted like food? I, I know, know. you gave that. it to me, tiki cocktail. So tiki cocktails is one of those things where you taste it and you think, you know, okay, I know the ingredients, but I can't put my thumb on it. Like yeah. I can't. And the same thing with that drink. When you gave it to me, I tasted it. I'm like, okay, it tastes like something I know, but I can't put my, my, my I can't get my They were infusing it. smoke on the ice. That's, ins that's yeah. insane. That's and insane. it actually tastes like, like, I'm like, why am I tasting smoke while I'm drinking? I actually why asked I'm her. I'm drinking it. Yeah, exactly. I think she was from uh, Norca. Uh, the right, restaurant? Norca, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure, but anyway. Amazing, amazing. And there's I another one too, there. was coffee. The, the coffee one was amazing too. I did not like the coffee one, but I'm not a coffee I'm person. Neither so am I, so that's it's okay. Why. Cool. But yeah, okay, so so please, please. Yes. How, back back. how did the Planter's Punch start? start? Okay, so the Planter's Punch, basically, like I said, is over a century old. It actually went all the way back to Civil War. And what ended up happening was that the Charleston town that it actually that it originated from 
was a very rich plantation town at the time. So plantation, yes, we're talking slaves. Oh my God, that's yeah, so sad. We're talking slaves. I so, wish that didn't happen. I know, but hey, it's part of history, right? You gotta take it like it is, right? So anyway, so what ended up happening is these people are so rich, they actually wouldn't even live on their own plantation. <laughs> like, nope, nope, nope. I want a cottage somewhere where I can go to and get a getaway from all the work that I'm not doing. Well, wouldn't you? Right? Wouldn't yeah, but no, you? no, 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 but it's not, it's not like they're getting away from work. They're like, I'm getting away from work that I'm not doing. Craig, here's the thing about rich people. Okay. They do oh, oh. whatever they want. Right, period. right, right. True enough, but true enough, Why, yeah. If you were that rich, would you have just the one house? No. Oh, no, I'd have houses all over the place. You'd have yeah, houses yeah, all over sure. the place. You'd probably That's have a true. yacht. That's true. You no, know, no, too. I'm not a yacht guy. I'm not a really? Yacht. No, it's not oh my, my thing. Oh, my God, I love no. yachts. No, no, no. Okay, thing. fine. You'd have a tiki house in every island. Exactly. Yes, I would. And I'd have a have, house in every tiki you'd island. You'd probably for sure. have your own private jet to bring uh, you there. Exactly. Yes. See? Yes, for sure. Okay, that would go. Yeah. So that's so, what they, these guys were doing. They had their slaves uh, making their making coffee it. there. So what happened was that on their cottages, they would sit on their porches and make these punches. And so that's how it started. Is, is it like the punches from the high school dance? Your prom? Yeah. Did you have prom, by the way? I did not. Oh. In Brazil, we don't I have that like crap. I'm sorry for you. I know. It's an experience you got to experience. I, I watched every single movie that has a prom in it, and I felt like I was in one. But I, I missed never something. Was. I missed something. I did. Oh my god. So, anyways, as we said, this takes over 100 years. So, so actually, through time, the recipe itself actually evolved over decades and decades, and even the name changed. So the first time it came out, it actually was called a Jamaican rum punch. Jamaica. Jamaica. We like Jamaica. That's right. We like Jamaica. And then in, uh, that was 1895, and then 1930, then it was called the Planter's Cocktail. A little more refined, you know, okay. Whatever, okay. We can see, well, planters, yeah, yeah. because planters, we had okay, plantations, yeah. okay. Yeah, plantations. And then 1948, Trader Vic finally put a stamp on it and made his own version. Now, get this, there's so many, so many different recipes for this drink, that Trader Vic himself, actually on his menu, had four different versions of this wow. drink. How many versions are we giving out today? We're going to give out two. How's that? Ooh. I know, eh? I'm pretty excited. I'm dying yeah. to know what's in this drink, Oh, Craig. my God. What's in it? What's in it? Tell me. Okay, so we're going to do uh, beach bum berries first. <laughs> and by the way, yes, that is beach bum berry. And by the way, it's bum, B-U-M. Oh, it's not bomb? Not bomb, like B-O-M-B. Oh, no. I'm so, <laughs> no, like I'm, I'm so like the bum on the, on the beach, you know, you give him spare change. I'm so, so freaking stupid. He's that... got the bottle and the, and, the, and the paper bag, you know. <laughs> I started off with beach bombardi. Now I thought it was bomb, Harry. Yeah, bomb, like it's a bomb. Yeah. yeah, no, and now you're telling me it's no, bomb? No, no, it's bomb, like oh in your bomb. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's depressing how stupid I, I am. No, hey, you're learning. I'm, right? I'm you're joking. Learning. You're learning, you're learning. I, know. I don't think I'm stupid. No, you're not. My God, you're so smart. Oh I know, I know. All right, so anyways, <laughs> let's thanks, go back thanks, to the rest Thank of you for the, 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 for the confidence incentive, there. Yeah. Hey, I get a bit of a boost on there. You know? Thank you. Because yeah, yeah. you know what? You're going to be one of those drunken girls like, I'm sorry. No, no I'm not. I'm not like that. No. <laughs> okay. No. So let's go with the recipe. It's a half, yes, ounce, of, a half ounce of lime juice, a half ounce of simple syrup, but it's like sugar and water, a half ounce of golden Jamaican rum. Ooh. Love it. I love it already. A half ounce of dark Jamaican rum. So we got two rums already. You love those, that one oh, too? Oh, God, yeah. And then an ounce of golden uh, Virgin Islands rum. That's okay. a third rum. I know. It's like three rums in here. Wow. It's, it's like a three in one. Remember we talked about tiki. Very booze forward. Like a lot of booze, <laughs> right? I can tell. Uh-huh. A uh, half ounce of teaspoon of grenadine. A half a teaspoon of florum. Now, florum is one of those ingredients we talked about before. And Paul is new to the show, by the way. So florum is one of those tiki cocktail uh, ingredients that's secretive for the years. And finally, Beach Bum Berry actually released the recipe. And if you go back to our test pilot episode okay. uh, on either the web page or listen to the episode itself, we actually give you the florum uh, recipe. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Is so that all or is there more stuff that goes in no, there? No, no. So we, we're not done. I know, it's very a lot of stuff. Yeah, because like we lost like, track oh of God. the recipe. This, this, this drink should be here at the bar. I mean, it's made with love. Exactly. It's two dashes of bitters and then six ounces of crushed ice. So you want crushed ice in there, not cubes. Okay, so so can you just recap without oh, yeah. ex explaining oh, the, the, the breakdown? The so a half ounce of lime juice, a half ounce of simple syrup, a half ounce of golden Jamaican rum, half ounce of dark Jamaican rum, one ounce of gold Virgin Island rum, and we'll explain that one, half ounce of teaspoon grenadine, half teaspoon of florum, and two dashes of bitters and six ounces of crushed ice. Cool. And All it has to be crushed ice. It can't tree. be it can't be normal ice. It has no. to be crushed. So what it is that the crushed ice is gonna kinda water it down a little bit. Then also too, like if you fill the glass of crushed ice, because it's not a real if you look at it, it's not a lot of alcohol. I mean not a lot of volume to this, right? Yeah. We're looking at what? Maybe about 
four or five ounces of liquid. Okay. So four or five ounces of liquid and just regular with regular ice cubes wouldn't fill the glass. Oh, okay. But if you do crushed ice, it actually will fill the glass. Okay, so yeah, it's, exactly. it's kind of like to, to pretend it's fuller. It's, so you think you need a full drink and you're not, yeah, you're getting half a glass. Okay. Anyway, so this actually, this recipe follows the classic uh, kind of cocktail formula, which is one sour, two sweet, three strong, that's, that's your spirits, all your spirits there. Four week, in this case, actually, that's the crushed ice that we're talking about. I, I have a question. Which one's yeah. the one, the one sour? So the one sour, that'll be your lime juice. The other recipe we're going to give you is the Smuggler's Cove. And if anyone's a tiki person and knows anything about tiki, uh, the Bible, Smuggler's Cove is one of the, the books, basically, that every bartender, including the ones that are here at Me With Love, will follow. So I, I feel one, like I'm going to like that one better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's just check it out. So it's yeah. one ounce of fresh lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of demerara syrup. That's actually brown sugar. I was going to ask you right now, what is what is demerara? Demerara is like brown sugar. No, so demerara. Like, okay. Yeah, Ooh. that's like brown sugar. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's got a little more texture to it. Yeah, it a little, a little more, more funk. twist. Exactly. A uh, quarter ounce of uh, all spice dram, three ounces of blended aged rum, and that's Jamaican rum again. Yay. Okay. Two dashes of bitters, okay. and then it's garnished with a mid spray. And the first one isn't garnished? No, actually, there's no garnish on that one. I know it's very strange. I know for tiki oh, drink, that's so not very, tiki. very strange. Very exactly, weird. yeah, I know for sure. So what you do is you're going to combine all these ingredients into a mixing tin with uh, your 12 ounces of crushed ice. You get a flash blend now, which means kind of like an off on, off on. So kind of give it a quick shake and then pour that into a glass. And uh, yeah, you're mid drink and you're good to go. That's so it. So I have a question. Is this, okay. is this one of those classic drinks that you'll find in any tiki bar? No, you could, well, yeah, in any tiki bar, yes. Okay. A regular bar, no. Okay, because, no, like, for example, that. my fiancé, Justin, he was thinking about going again to Disney and going to the tiki bars and right, stuff like right, that. Right, right, Do you think we can find this drink in one of the You Disney? will find this drink. Now, just explain to our listeners, by the way, Paula joined the show, and one of the things she emphasized to me about joining the show and she was excited about was that her fiance is a tiki nut. He loves tiki he loves cocktails. It. He's getting into it. He's starting to learn about rums and everything. And uh, he so, plays yeah. the ukulele and everything. Oh my God, that's He's awesome. adorable. It's amazing. He collects so, the same stuff like you. It's super cute. I know all the picks and the glasses and everything. Oh, for yeah, sure, but, yeah, but he's the big fan of the Disney portion of it. Right, right. Disney actually is a theme park. So yeah, why not have it better than anything than a tiki theme? It's the best thing you can do there, right? So you sure. know some stuff about the Disney stuff? Yeah, so let's break it down. So yes. this is just some sort of kind of quick tips or facts about Disney. So in 1962, the craze actually finally made its way to Disney, and they opened up the Tahitian Terrace, which is a Polynesian-style restaurant. Now, just a year later, okay, they open up what's called now the world-famous Enchanted Tiki Room. Isn't that a cool name? Enchanted Tiki Room. I love it. Tiki Room. I love it because it makes me, yeah. like, immediately think of, like, one of the fairies, you know, like Disney stuff, but also... Like, from a girl's perspective, is that yeah. like the princesses? Yeah, the... exactly. Well, no, Disney is an enchanted place, if you well, stop sure. and think oh, about it. Sure. The it's whole a magical enchanted. thing. Exactly. So, I, I think the name is absolutely it perfect. Fits right in there perfectly. Yeah. yeah, so open up the pub. Yeah, so it features the very first animatronics, which means, like, all those mechanical things. When you go to Disney, you see, like, the things moving the around. The little animals. Like the mechanicals. Yeah, so actually, there's 225 of those. Wow, and in one the enchanted tiki room? tiki room. In the enchanted tiki room. Yeah, exactly, oh, wow. yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So also too, the music that they play in the Chanted Tea Room is not exactly Polynesian. So basically, we're talking about Hawaiian, New Zealand, Bahamas. Easter Island, Bahamas. It's not quite that. They skewed it more towards the commercial end, and it's more tropical. Okay. So they did a little mix and match of everything to suit exactly, all the public. Yeah. So suit the, to suit the public, right? Yeah, because it's it's Disney stuff. It's a it's, different market, right? Exactly. Yeah. So in 1971, actually, the Disney actually built the South Pacific Resort. Uh, which is actually called the Polynesian Village Resort. And it actually opened up October 1st, 1971. And here's a cool thing about it. It actually was linked, it still is linked, obviously, to the Magic Kingdom uh, by monorail train. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Now, that, that was, I think, the first resort I stayed when I went to Disney. No way, so you stayed here. Yeah, I did. Oh, very but cool. But it wasn't called this, though. No, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll break that down in a second. Really? But how, how'd you, how'd you, how, what did you think of the whole place? So here's, here's what I love the most. All the Disney characters yeah. that you see around in the Disney parks and stuff dressed as themselves. Yeah. So you would see a mini with the hula um, Ooh, skirt, skirt on. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and then Mickey, Mickey would have like a like with a little Hawaiian shirt on. Hawaiian shirt, and so would Pluto and 
goofy. Yeah. Everyone, like it was super cute. Chip and Dale, it was no adorable. No way. Yeah, I have pictures. Oh with all my of god, them. that is awesome. That's cool. It was awesome, and the 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 monorail is true. It goes right yeah, it inside goes right of through. Magic Pin. Nice. So the Polynesian Village Resort actually has 492 rooms, has eight long houses, and has a great ceremonial hall in the center, which actually has a gift shop, a restaurant, and a giant waterfall and a forest at the lobby. So when you check in, you get this giant waterfall and a forest to Isn't look at. Isn't that cool? Isn't that the coolest? That's Disney right there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how Disney works. I'm Brazilian. Everywhere I go has to have a forest and a waterfall. Has to have a forest and a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a prerequisite? I'm exactly. joking. And then you came to Canada and saw the snow, and you're like, man, what, what, what is this? I cannot believe I it's understand. April 1st and it's still snowing. It's still snowing. <laughs> what the hell I know, is it's happening crazy. with That's this That's why country. we're tiki. We're all about warmth. Yes. Exactly. So let's go back to some, some more information here. So actually, in this resort, there actually also was a luau cove, which actually held all the luaus for the guests to see. So basically, you check in, you hang out for the day, and then late at night, you can go to the luau and check out the fire show, the dancers, and the music. I did not see any of that. Oh no, because what, you're, how old are you? When you went, to, when you went there? Probably eight or nine. Oh, okay, okay. I think mom put me to bed way before yeah, that. Yeah, I think she was like, Crap. okay, you go to bed and we're going to go party now. I like luau. Uh, <laughs> they're usually on the beach and super nice. So in 1972, there actually was a Chinese junk ship uh, that actually would dock at the resort. Oh my god, that's so super cool. So I had a little bit of culture there. Yeah. Polynesian, right? So None of us. Asian. I wasn't. I wasn't alive yet, but. No, no. Uh, well, I was, but I was like um, what, five. Really? Are we sh really sharing our ages like I'm that? I'm aged. I know. I'm aged. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, aged here, too. Maybe here's, here's an earlier date for you. Maybe it might help. 1985. Disney changed the name of the Polynesian Village Resort to Polynesian Resort. Yeah, that's what I remember. Got rid of the village. Exactly. Yeah, because in '85 I was four, so I went after it was Polynesian Resort. There you go. For sure. Now, also, too, we talked about in the show before, uh, Trader Vic, who's one of the famous tiki creators of tiki culture or whatever. But there's, like, actually, in Disney, there's actually what's called the Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar. And is it made by Trader Vic? No, no. Okay, they, they just did a spin-off? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. cool. It opened in 2011 on the resort. And also, too, they also have Trader Sam's Grog and yeah. Grotto. Oh, so, those are adorable. All tiki bars on the resort. And uh, yes, there's a little a couple, a couple fun facts about Disney and tiki and how they're infused together. See? What so a perfect match, eh? That is a perfect travel for you to go to. I know. I need to, I need to, I need to travel there. I need to get there. I'm telling Since you. Since speaking about travel, I think we're going to put Norma on next with her travel tips. Yes, please, because awesome. I love her tips. Yeah, they're great. Your attention, please. Please follow the following instructions of this vacation to help you enjoy your trip and stay safe. So once you get to your destination, now let's talk about some points that are actually going to help your vacation become smoother and easier and also safer. So staying connected with home, that's one of the important points here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to elaborate on that one? Sure. So I have a teenager uh, who stays home. And although he's very responsible, I'm just not the kind of mother who's going to take off and say, see you in a week. <laughs> it's not happening. I need to make sure I check in on him and, and all that good stuff. I want to stay somewhat connected to the world. So pay a little extra if you need to for the convenience of internet in, let's say, your room once you get there. A lot of these days, Wi-Fi has become a big thing. So if you need to pay for it, I have no issues paying a little bit for that because it's usually not that expensive for, let's say, a week or so. And this way, you'll be able to you know, stay connected to those teenagers. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of places we've gone to, they've said, oh, well, there's free Wi-Fi in the lobby. Now, if you think about it, okay, that's Wi-Fi for every single person that's in that lobby. So we've been in lobbies where there's like, you know, four or 500 people all working on the internet. So basically the internet becomes a screeching halt. Right. You, so can't, you can't even download a picture. Yeah, so that was Cuba for us uh, yeah. last February where everybody was, you know, between 7 and 9, 10 o'clock. The lobby was packed. It was full of smoke. You couldn't download actually really anything. Yeah, and couldn't even, even upload anything. You couldn't upload, download. It was yeah. it was painful. And then you're stuck, you know, sitting with the smokers. Uh, if you're a non-smoker, that might really bother you, right? So it was not convenient. It was really slow, and and it's just not convenient. Right? Also, too, but I mean, also if it's in your room, like we had on this last trip we're on, yeah. it's great. We're sitting on our patio, watching the sun go down. And we could check her emails, we can upload our pictures to Facebook, and all the stuff in the convenience of our patio, instead of being down in the lobby where everybody else is. So it's, oh, yeah. it's a little more convenient that way, I think. And then oh, also, yeah. too, if you wanted to watch movies and you didn't, say, download them off your iTunes account, 
then yeah, then you've got that option as well. Yeah, exactly. That I have to give a shout out to Sunscape for that because that was wicked. They gave so the first time we were there in two thousand, I don't know, seven, no, I think sixteen, it was something, fifteen, somewhere on there. Anyway, the first time we were there, you had to pay to have internet in your room, which we gladly did, and it was great. This time, they've actually solved that whole crowded, you know, lobby situation and provided free access to everyone in their room. It even works on the beach. On the resort, yeah. So we're actually yeah. we're sitting on the beach. Yep uploading facebook pictures at the same time it was oh, amazing i loved it oh it was awesome and uh me i like listen to music when i'm in the sun so actually i got to listen to some more music that i actually had that was not on my phone so right it worked out great yeah it was cool. nice not that i'm recommending that you be on facebook all the time while you're on the that's beach right. you're on vacation that's what are you right. doing but once in a while <laughs> hey guys look at my feet hey. in the sand <laughs> that's right make your friends all jealous like, that's right i wish you guys were here that's right actually it's funny so uh, we have to say this so norma actually made on one of her Facebook posts, first world problems for actually, vacation. I think it was tropical vacation problems. That's actually. right, and it was so funny. So, so what were some of the points we had? It was like, uh, um, well, water was too cold at thirty-eight <laughs> degrees or something like that. I said, well, the water's too cold because it's only twenty-nine degrees, but feels like thirty-two. Yeah. Um, there's sand in my sandals. Uh, my <laughs> my beach towel has sand on it. And I get too much oil <laughs> and lotion on my hands. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it was, it was pe- a good one. It was a good one. People weren't too happy with. All me. right. So this one also actually hits home to me as well. Tipping. So tipping your bartender and tipping other people that are in the resort, and trust me, this is a world of difference. Norma, you want to break that down? Right. So what we do, we always tip. Um, you know, we're I feel pretty privileged to be able to go on some of these really nice vacations. Um, they're not luxury vacations that we go on, but regardless, we feel really lucky to be able to do this. So, you know, and I obviously tip people here, so why would I not tip, tip people there, regardless of whether it's an all-inclusive or not? So we always tip the maid every day for, you know, cleaning our room. Uh, we tip our luggage handler. We tip for if we order room service, that kind of thing. And we always leave some money in the, in the mini bar in the mini fridge in case we want something particular. So I left a little note. Could we please have, please have more water? Could we have, you know, Diet Coke, whatever. And we left a couple dollars and we always got extra and it was great. Yeah. Cause I think that's a point that I know a lot of my friends don't do is they don't tip inside their mini fridge. You never think of that one. Yep. Right. You just put the, basically the money on the, the, the bed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well that, that covers everybody. Well, no, actually your maid is one person. Yep. The mini fridge actually is a different person. That's right. So if you don't put any money in there, you might be just getting just the basic minimum and that's all you're going to get. Or you may not get it refilled every day depending on right. the Right. We saw that one right? time where we actually ran out of Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd like a little caffeine in the afternoon right before dinner. <laughs> exactly. And I've mentioned before on, 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 on previous podcasts and things like this, like tipping your bartender because these guys will basically... Uh, they'll give you the, first of all, they're going to give you the better stuff. I mean, I've actually gotten tips from them on things that I should drink actually at their bar. And two, if there's a crowd of people, guess what? You're going to be the first person they're going to take care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, example, I don't know how many times we went to the bar and it would be packed and we just wanted water and ice. And they were more than willing to give us that. Like you know, we weren't even buying drinks. Yep. Uh, Norma was one of the bartenders that was great about that. And Kenneth, I mean, basically they, as soon as they saw us, they're like, okay, we'll give you some ice. We'll get you some fresh water. Mm-hmm. And we weren't even getting drinks, and there's other people in line, and literally they had to wait. And they're going to serve you with a smile, right? And it's going to make your vacation feel that much better because you're making friends, right? Exactly, yeah. And trust me, I don't make friends easily. <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, I, I want to point out, though, too, like when you tip the bartender and then you ask them about some places on the island to go to, they're more than willing to give that information to you, too. Well, they're going to go out of their way to to do things for you, give you information, you know, be yeah. extra friendly. Like, all this is good. Same thing like when we t- tipped our, our taxi driver in St. Lucia. He ended up telling us about a street party that we ended up going to later that week yeah. where he came and got us and brought and, and was stayed kind of with us and stayed there while we were at the street party to take us home. Right, because for you know? two reasons. One, he wanted to make sure that we're safe. Yeah. And two, we said that one of us, I can't remember who was not feeling well. Uh, it was me, actually. You weren't feeling well. So mm-hmm. he said, you know what? Tell you what. I'll come with you guys. Stay with you. That way, if you want to go back, he'll yeah. drive you back to the resort and then come back and pick us up. Yeah. And so, exactly. So if you tip your, your taxi driver in the first few days you're there, and we've had this. They give us the card. Like, yeah. you know, hey, give me a call. I'll come pick you up. And then basically, you've got a personal escort. That's right. Uh, another good one we actually did was also too is that we tipped really well was the cab driver in Cuba. Right. And then we actually got our own personal tour guide through the whole uh, Marone, Cuba. 
Yeah, you have to be careful saying escort. <laughs> Sorry, not escort. <laughs> no, no. I mean, basically, our own personal, like, kind of tour, tour guide. guide. Yep. And it was great. We saw places that normally the tourists would not see. That's right. You took us around. It was it was very personal. We basically made a friend, you know? It was good. Thank you, and enjoy your flight. All right. So those are some travel tips for you guys. And by the way, uh, just let you know that the travel tips will actually go on for quite a few shows. So we have some that are on previous shows. So if you want to check this out, go back and listen to some shows prior to this one. You should. Just keep all of them. Write all of them down because Norma has the best tips. Like, well, I travel traveled all the time, so too. Much. Exactly, but I yeah. never noticed any of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I really never paid attention to the stuff she pays attention. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to start well, putting that in action. Survival. I know. Oh, so I feel stupid again. No. Thank you, Norma. Oh, Thank you so much for great. teaching me. By the way, I have to say, when you met her, uh, when you came to the house, this is where we record the show, by the way, at my, at my office. And you came to the house. She was like, oh, my God, she's adorable. I love her. Oh, my God, really? Yeah, I love yeah. her, too. Yeah, was awesome. She was so She was a great mix. She's she was a great such a good mix. hostess yeah. I've ever met. She was yeah, so adorable. Yeah, you see her in the summertime when we do tiki parties. She's like, oh, my God, there's got to be, there's gonna, no, I need more food. I need more food. I mean, there's always so much food. Like, we get leftovers for days. <laughs> Oh, am it's I like, going to be oh invited to one oh, of your yeah, tiki yeah, parties? Oh, yeah, for sure. You'll be invited for sure. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to do a virgin for me of anything? We'll do a virgin drinks of all the stuff do you got, Do you know that sure. one of the bartenders, he actually did a virgin for me? No way. I kid you. I'm not kidding you at and all. you're still... I kid you not. He did a virgin for me. <laughs> well, only one out of, out of 18. There we go. Okay. This is, uh, let's let you guys know who we are. We are www.tikicentralcanada.ca. And uh, if you go to our website, you will see that we have all of our episodes on there. You can stream them live. We also have all of our recipes to so every single thing we've done. Also, too, there's some links on there for some cool books that we've got here at the booth that you can check out for sure if you're doing some references or you need some information yourself. And then also, too, we also have a subscribe page. Very important. We actually have no commercials, right, Paul? No commercials yes, whatsoever. Yes, so please subscribe and help us. Yeah, so that's how we follow, basically. Our foundation is subscribers. And uh, I think we're going to go have some drinks. And you're going to give me away your dog tag. I, yeah, I have to give mine away. I never did. I'm still thinking. So, so who's going to be getting the, the dog tag? I don't care. know. I'm in between two. Oh, so, okay. Well, you gotta make it, got to make a decision. You I got, know. You got about I, five minutes. Oh, my so, God. You go. I'm terrible at making decisions. I know. She's terrible. I know. Crap. <laughs> All right, folks. So we're going to go out and make some drinks, and we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye. Well, I don't know about you. But I got informed, guys, hey, guys, where's my drink?